Well, I also was really enjoying being with you at the gathering that you hosted last Sunday and watching you and Bev orchestrate that lovely meal. I was thinking, you, you seem like someone who must have been a cradle of Episcopalian or at least cradle of St. Paul's person, but how, how did you come to be here? How did you claim this as your community? Because you've told me it's all about community for you. It's, it's all about community for me. Uh, it's all about uh, love and support. Um, actually, to tell you how I came here, you have to know that I grew up in Texas as a Southern Baptist including uh, actually going to Baylor for three semesters until I could stand it no longer, and left Jerusalem on the Brazos, which is what they call it, uh, and went to the Den of Iniquity, the University of Texas, and never went back to church for decades. That was it for me. So when I was probably in my 50s, I thought, well, I'll kind of search and see what I could find. And St. Paul's had always attracted me because it's beautiful. And I knew enough about the, the Episcopal ter- Church to know that, um, as Bishop Mark told us yesterday about his mother becoming Episcopalian, it wasn't the music, it wasn't the roses. Mm-hmm. It was the church never lost its way in God's justice. And mm-hmm. so I came to St. Paul's and um, found a home and friends and community that I love. And um, I love the outreach and the, the community efforts that St. Paul's makes. And most of all, what I love about it is that it has its arms wide open to everyone. Yes, that's so resoundingly clear. Mm-hmm. Well, so you have been living into this season of new beginnings. What, what excites you the most when you think about where God is calling us to be, looking toward the world and its needs and how we can be? joyfully serving in those spaces? Well, I think the way forward, and I've had sort of my most recent experience uh, with St. Paul's has been um, with my granddaughters. My, my daughter does not go to church, and they had never been to church, and they come and visit me a lot. And so one Saturday, my older granddaughter said, Memers, can we go to church with you tomorrow? And when I picked myself up, I said, sure. <laughs> you know? She said, I've always wanted to see the inside of your church. It's like a castle. It's so beautiful. I said, sure, so we'll go. And I bring them, and they meet. You know, they're greeted warmly, and they make their little name tags, and they come in, and Jocelyn brings them books, and the ushers bring us programs. And then Lena comes up and says, do you think they would like to carry the offering plate? And so I thought, "Mm, I don't know. And so I said, sure. (laughs) And so... Um, that first Sunday I'm trying to manage the hymnal and the program and up and down and everything else and the poor guy next to me I said oh you drew the short straw today when you sat here Um, and so that was great and they carried the offering plates so we come the second time can we do the offering plates Lena's here absolutely but that was my that was really my most touching time because that happened to be the day that uh, Pete Garrison was preaching and I was sitting on the front row and I noticed that he was wearing sock feet. He didn't have his shoes on and I, I was just sort of fascinated by that. And then we went up for the blessing and my little girls had their arms crossed and they were on my right and he came to bless them and he closed his eyes and he put his hands on their little heads and he gave the most wonderful blessing and a, a tear came down my eye and that really was the, the only divine moment in my life that I've ever experienced. And um, so it was great. Then the third time we come and we're getting ready and my girls say, can we take the offering plate? And I said, well, if Lena's there, you can. And without missing a beat, the eight-year-old says, do you have her telephone number? <laughs> She wasn't there, and they didn't, but I've been assured (laughs) in future visits. So what what excites me about St. Paul's is the fact that I've actually been able to bring my grandchildren and have them sort of introduced to this. But really what excites me the most is is your being here. It's new beginning. You have a joy and a radiance and a beneficence that I think just embodies what I believe Christianity should be, and I'm so excited about this new beginning, and I'm excited to 
continue in more earnestness my journey. So thank you, Sarah. Well, thank you. Thank you for all you bring, and thank you for bringing your girls. I was delighted when they <laughs> ran into the room the other night when we were at, at Bev's house. So I think the, um, the, the ability we have to welcome them in and help them feel like their mm-hmm. gifts matter mm-hmm. is really powerful here. So I am so grateful to you and grateful to this community. Stay tuned for more adventures and new beginnings. New beginnings. <laughs>